Uh, well, thanks again. It's always nice to be back home. And uh, this is my home. This is where I got my start from all the great folks uh, that are present here. Um, Irene, Miss Odom, Trish. I don't know if Mr. Hunt's on or not, but, and Mr. Hunt, and I'm sure you all have all heard the, the origin story, you know, I'm not a superhero, but I do have an origin story. Um, uh, I wouldn't be here if it, if it wasn't for, um, you know, Mr. Hunt agreeing to see me um, at a last minute, you know, request on a Monday night of all, of all times. And uh, uh, him being gracious enough to talk to me and to look at my, what was then a little portfolio of cartoons and stuff uh, got me here. So, uh, you know, you can call it a God thing or serendipity or whatever, but whatever it was, um, um, I'm blessed uh, to have this opportunity to share, to go out and find stories, um, you know, of everyday people, you know. Uh, so um, I think Trish, you had said that I guess the our thrust or the theme would be photography. Is that right? Uh -huh. There's a lot of photographers in here, a few writers. Okay. Uh, well, you know, I always tell folks that I learned how to ask questions hanging out with the photographers. You know, the photographers were the ones, you know, who were um, always, you know, like, hey, man, you know, I, because Irene can tell you, I was, you know, very shy, I almost say shy, scared is probably the word, um, to ask questions. And she would press me, like, well, did you ask this question? I was like, no, nah. you know. So you just, you know, that's how I, her class kind of prompted me and pushed me to go out and, um, you know, ask questions I normally wouldn't ask. But when I was with the photographers, the photographers were like, oh my gosh, man. They would, um, you know, they're the true folks. I mean, if you're starting out as a writer, uh, hanging with the photographers is like, you know, the best tutorial as far as asking question goes. Um, and, I just picked up, you know, every time I was with the photographer, I would pick up little things I could add to my toolbox, you know, okay, ask this, ask that, you know, just the manner about how they went about things, you know. So um, I always, I still do. I mean, if we go out, because it's not my story, it's our story, it's, it's, it's our coverage. So, you know, it's sort of like a, a work in tandem, you know, just kind of pass off to each other. Uh, especially when it's something really, really interesting. Not that they all aren't, but sometimes you'll run across a person or an event, and you're just like, it just blows you away. And then uh, the reader is the one who profits, you know, from the questions that we ask or the curiosity. I mean, you know, so uh, yeah, like the other night, um, speaking of, I was working with um, Billy Calzada, who is uh, if y'all don't know Billy, he's, I, I call him the Zen master because he's, he's just, he's, it's like working with, uh, you know, a monk. He's just like that 24 seven. He's, he, there is no, there isn't an off switch. He's just that gentle and uh, caring. Um, even in the most difficult of times, I've, I've seen it over the years. But we went out, we covered a, um, we were covering this young lady. Her name is Leah Morales. She's 11 years old and she's a tennis table female. She's amazing. Um, so we're there with her mother and father. And um, I remember, you know, Billy is there, you know, like taking photos, taking video, um, asking questions, but not being intrusive, if you will. And uh, really getting that, giving her the, the story, the documentary style coverage that it, um, that it deserved. Now, he would have stayed there longer, but he had to go downtown uh, to cover a story about the Haitians that were coming through the city. But for that, for at least, I would say an hour and a half, close to two hours, he just zeroed, on, zeroed in. And if you go to her, to the story, the story's online. If you go, you can see I mean, 
you, you know, Sports Illustrated could have done better. I mean, there's close-ups of her and the ball, and you just see the whole, you know, the whole, you know, her swing, everything, you know. Um, and hopefully the words will marry with the images uh, whenever you read the story. So, yeah, no, I, so, and, and uh, it's always good to have a, to hang out with the photographers on, on, on uh, different stories um, because it's almost like, you know, I mean, your partner's in crime, you know, uh, especially if you're covering hurricane or something like that, you know, you got, you know, you got your do with, you know, your ride or die. That's, you know, it's like this, this is your person. And it doesn't matter who it is. There's not a favorite. The, um, when you get there together uh, to cover a story, it's just assumed and that, and it usually goes that way. Even during the protests, uh, you look out for each other, you got each other's back. Um, and that's what happened uh, when we had the George Floyd protests, you know, we're on the phone to each other or we're just looking across the crowd, you know, and they're pointing and if they run across somebody that's interesting, they'll say, yo, go check out so-and-so. So, um, you know, it's never a solo endeavor. It's, it's, it's always, um, you know, this collaboration, you know, um, it's a, a dance, if you will. And working with them for this period of time, um, you know, there's, it's just kind of like understood a lot of times, you know, because most of the people I work with are, have been there longer than me and they're pros and, um, but there's never any ego turns or anything like that. You know, we just go out and cover the job, be it a council meeting or, you know, a circus, uh, trapeze artist or whatever, you know, we try and give it, you know, our full attention, no matter how small, no matter how large. Okay. Any questions from anybody? What's Rocky, been I, know you, Rocky most, I know you got a question. Uh, what's uh, been the most uh, exhausting or exciting story that you've covered? That's a great question, Jennifer. Um, I, I can't pinpoint, let me see. Wow. Uh, recently, I would, I would probably have to say the, um, it wasn't, it was three of us covering the first protest. And uh, one of the few times, the last times that we were able to work downtown out of the newsroom. And it was literally, we got swept away by the crowd as we were walking with them. We, we, we had no, you know, uh, we didn't have any control over the situation for about three or four blocks. We just moved along by the crowd, trying to talk to people in the crowd and <laughs> then trying to find a place to, you know, um, forward that info, you know, to sit down and really go over your notes and everything and then jump back in the crowd. <laughs> so uh, I've never experienced anything like that. And then, uh, but the good thing was, you know, we would, uh, we had kind of talked a little bit about it beforehand. So we were able to um, connect with each other and so-and-so was like, I'm gonna go ahead and be at police station. You handle the crowd, I'll be back at the park. But when you're in the thick of it and you have no control of the situation, it, it's kind of scary, you know? And then it's COVID at the same time and you're in the middle of this, you know, thousands of people. Um, I had never been anything like that before. Um, so yeah. That that was a Black Lives Matter crowd or a protest? Uh, yeah, it was the, the first protest down at Travis Park. Okay. It was on a Saturday and um, we met at the park and it was, uh, as it grew, um, they just, that's when they took off. And, I mean, that's when they headed out towards uh, SAPD headquarters. And um, yeah, it was when you, when you, you jump in there and you're talking to people then all of a sudden you're talking to folks and the crowd swarms around you and moves you. And I, you know, but I have to say that, you know, um, training I received at SAC, you know, kicked in, you know, and you do what you do, you know, you, you do it as safely as you can, uh, but you know, you gotta get this information for the story. So that was paramount. That was the first thing in my mind, you know, not just mine, but my other colleagues, it was three of us. 
and uh, we, we were able to um, feed the main writer and get that story in the paper, you know. But, you know, I think sometimes um, the behind the scenes, because, you know, when the reader, when someone look, clicks on the page, uh, you know, the story online or they open the, you know, they read it in the paper, um, they read it, they, they look at the photos, and they're like, okay, cool. But if, you know, I think a, a story that we probably should look into doing is the story behind the story, you know, because now whenever I look at a photo, I'm like, okay, that, that in, you know, the photographer had to be in a tree or whatever to get that shot, they had, you know, or to get that close, they had to be at this uh, vantage point. So it gives, uh, I have a greater, you know, respect. I mean, I always have respect for them anyway, but the, um, the pains that sometimes are taken, I don't think people appreciate, you know, so hats off to all the photojournalists out there who make it look easy, but it's not, <laughs> I'm sure. I don't know if you have your chat open, but uh, Rocky has a question for you in the chat. Uh, let's, see. let's see. I'm new to this guy, so I'm just, you know, I'm trying to, let's see. Uh, how do I manage my time when I have to balance multiple assignments? Um, I like to uh, use the analogy, it's like being a sous chef, you know? You got like eight or nine, well, however many burners you have on one of those stoves, those big fancy stoves. Um, it's like keeping, you know, like having several pots boiling at the same time and which one is about to be done. That's the one you pay your attention to, but also while may, making sure the others don't burn or, you know, dry up, you know, all the water evaporate out. So like, um, usually, like I have the column, um, San Antonio stories. So I'm working on that. I'm working on a story right now on a, uh, a gentleman who, um, who, who has, um, he wrote a book about um, suicide. He lost six members of his family to suicide. And, you know, you know so now I'm, that, that's in the back burner. Um, I've got um, other stories that might develop. So um, I just kind of touch them throughout the day, you know, like um, I, sp I try to spend like, okay, I may spend two hours in this story. Um, and then I'm okay. I try to block off that time for that, and then I know that I have two or three more stories I have to look at through the day. Some of them are just getting background, some may be just finishing up and polishing up, or some may just be going through and doing research. So um, I try and I do a. I have my, uh, you know, very very simple. I just have my thing to do list. I, you know, there's a sense of accomplishment I get. I learned this in the Air Force. I was in the Air Force for 22 years. Uh, Trish probably already told you all that. Mm -mm. Okay, I, I was in the Air Force for 22 years. And um, some of the best um, uh, management training and just working with people I learned in the Air Force. So um, this is a war story, hopefully the only one, but sometimes I get caught up. Um, I had, uh, so when you're in the Air Force, the first four years they send you to uh, Airman Leadership School. And uh, that's where you learn, you start to build, you know, build the blocks of, how, of, uh, of uh, becoming a supervisor and how to work with, you know, your colleagues, your, uh, your supervisors and your subordinates. And um, the one thing that they taught us was, you know, make a thing to do list. Um, it's very simple. You don't have to have a tablet. You can just get you need a piece of paper, pencil. You can even do it mentally. But what it does is when you check off each hashtag, you know, it gives you a sense of accomplishment. And it, it will bug you throughout the day because you knew you, you got one thing left. Like, and, and, it, and you will, you, it's almost like this little, little internal alarm clock. Um, it becomes part of your routine. And I've been doing it, heck, going on 30 some years now, you know? Um, and if I do something, <laughs> I'm so anal, if I do something and it's not on my list, I put it on my list and check it off. And I'm like, I did it, <laughs> you know, but uh, that's, that's, um, that's how I manage my time. Um, 
like when you're out and you're, you know you're covering a story i know you're on the go a lot so like what like in that thought process what sticks out to you to like when someone's interesting to go up for you to go up to them like like how does that thought process work when you're out there you mean like if i go out and i see somebody doing something interesting and how do i go up to them or because yeah, i know you mentioned earlier like there's a bunch of people so um I know you can't talk to everybody, but you might find. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, yeah. Like when I'm out, uh, you know, in the crowd and stuff. Uh, um, I have to say that I've been very fortunate. I've there's been very few times people have said no to me. You know, when I've come up and introduced myself and told them what I was doing. I maybe 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 two or three. You know. Um, at first it was like, it was very daunting. You know, I would look and you have this crowd of people and you have these folks, you know, like you got hundreds of people you can select to talk to. And um, sometimes it's just a, um, it, it, it's an intuition, if you will, you know? Um, if it's a time crunch, I pick the first person I run up against, you know, and I explain to them. And a lot of times at things that like the protests where they're walking, I would tell them, hey, I'm, you know, I introduce myself. And um, I don't expect them to stop. So I would tell them, hey, I can walk and talk with you if that's OK. And so <laughs> I'm walking and talking and making little notes and stuff you know, as I go along. And that's been a lot of what I've done in the past. You know, if you had a fair protest, a concert, whatever, you know, um, I try and think, OK, man, how am I going to do this? And sometimes the people will be gracious enough to say, hey, let's step over here so uh, we can I can hear you, you know. So um, I just, you know, it, it's, uh, I think people can sense when you're genuine. I mean, I don't have an agenda. I do I tell them what I'm doing and what I'm working on, you know, and is it possible I can speak to them? And nine times out of 10, people are like, yeah, okay, sure, you know. Um, the ones who have said no are usually, you know, either head into a car or maybe just don't want to talk to me. But like I say, I only think about two or three in all this time, you know? And we've been to the, um, doing the rodeo, uh, the cattle drives and stuff. <laughs> those, those are always interesting. <laughs> you know, the cattle are, you know, doing their thing, going down Houston Street, and you got to talk to somebody, you know? Uh, and the cowboys are, you know, are, you know, riding by with their horses and waving to the kids and the kids are losing their mind. and. You know, you got to, oh, the, the really, the really <laughs> interesting ones are when you have to talk to a whole group of kids and you're like, oh, Lord, man, you know, because kids are very like, yeah, I liked it. It was awesome. It's exciting. But you always get that jewel. There's always a jewel if you keep looking. There's always a gem, someone that pulls you the heck away, you know, that just blurts out something. You're like, well, you know, I think it's the existential, you're like, whoa, you know, what the... <laughs> And you got, and, and then, you know, like, I got it, you know, sometimes you may have to just, you know, you may have to delve a little bit and talk to three or four, but nine times out of 10, especially with kids, um, <laughs> you'll run across a diamond, you know, they're right there. Uh, and then one thing I do, with, I try to do with kids, and I learned this from the Air Force also, is uh, I try to get down to their level, you know, I never try to talk down to them or anybody. And I learned that because a lot of times, you know, when you're talking to folk, um, people on your team, you know, you don't want to have that uh, posture that, you know, like um, that, you know, imposing posture. You try to sit down and you try to remove bad barriers to communication. So when we sit down with the individual, um, I never sat behind a desk. I always sat so that I was facing them. So there's no obstruction. So there wasn't any um, failure to communicate, you know, like the, um, was it, was it HUD um, with Paul Newman? I know, I know, but um, for all the cinema folks, y'all might know this. There's a, um, the film called HUD with Paul Newman. And there's the old, I think he was the, uh, I forget what they call him, the, not the warden, but the jail, the guy that, um, with the whip and all this stuff. And so I guess he's trying to break Paul Newman. 
and Paul Newman's not having it. And I'm, I'm screwing, I'm messing this up. But anyway, the line that, the classic line is, boy, what I think we have here is a failure to communicate, you know? So I don't want to try to remove that. I don't want anything that, that will obstruct, uh, you know, the communication process between whoever I'm talking to. That was kind of rough. Sorry about that, but yeah. That's the gist of it. <laughs> Anything else? Oh, cool hand Luke. Thank you, ma'am. See, I got my rider. My, my, that was from Miss Odom. Yeah, yeah, see. Thank you, ma'am. I think I remember the guy's name. Struther, the Struther Martin, the actor? Ah, yeah, okay. Uh, so yeah, what other questions y'all have? Yeah. I have one for you, sir. Who's, hey, hi, Veronica. Hi. Okay, so I know that some things can get overwhelming, especially when you're covering multiple st stories like Rocky touched base on, but I know that you could get into a rut when like your story doesn't go through or that it just didn't come out the way you want. So what keeps you motivated during those times? Um, you know, the, the thing that keeps me going is I'm, I'm always just chasing the next story. I mean, I, like, I don't believe that I've written, like, I don't have a favorite, really a favorite story, or I think, I don't think I've written my best story yet. So I'm, 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 I'm always, you know, on the hunt, I'm always trying to look for that next story. And the beautiful thing about, you know, being a general, general assignments reporter slash features reporter is um, each story is a challenge, you know, um, one thing I learned at the at the Ranger from uh, you know was um, not to mail it in. You know, I think sometimes you you get the same brief, you get the same story, you cover the same people, and you easily do, you do it like a form letter because you've done it so often. You can put in, you know. Um, and your nut graph, you can just, you could basically copy and paste and just change the names and dates. But um, we don't do that. We never did it. Even if it's only for a small brief. I mean, there's some things that you have to, that are form. I mean, that have a formula to them. But uh, for stories and things like that, it's, it's uh, it can be lazy. Yes, that's, that's, you know, and so I always, if I, if I feel I'm doing that, I try to change it up. Now I have to say that, um, a lot of what we do and what you see sometimes is um, um, it's because of a great editor. <laughs> because uh, I can tell you, like recently, the story we did on the like, Big Give. I mean, the story I, I opened the story up. You know, I thought, okay, well, let me hit the news first and go into it. But I had two uh, really glimpses of humanity with these new nonprofits, and so Julie Silva, my editor, she moved it up and wove it in to the story and it made all the, the difference in the story. So a lot of times, you know, working with a good editor, you know, like uh, I I would talk over stories with, you know, Irene and Mr. Odom, Trish, you know, and, you know, that brainstorming, that's, that. I always just love the brainstorming. I, I love it. Like if, to me, it's gold when you're, when your uh, editor says, hey, go, go find me a story. I'm like, bet. And I'm not coming back to have a story, you know? And uh, that, that's what I learned at the, um, at the Ranger. I can recall Trish, you know, um, talking, I guess I should say talking to the photographers. <laughs> <when they're, laughs> we'll call it that. Um, and no, but just, you know, encouraging the photographers to go out and they're like, you, you can go out and find stories happening on campus. And so I had that spirit when I got to the Express News, I had been there about four or five years. And I would, and I started out as an editorial assistant. So I was privy to a lot of the things that editors said to reporters. And I recall Kim Fox one day asking a reporter and I could see the bait, I could see the trap. I'm like, dude, you don't see this trap, you know? <laughs> and she's like, Hey, so-and-so, uh, 
what are you doing here? You know? And um, she's, he's like, oh, you know, reading this book, you know. <laughs> I'm like, wow. I see about to lay into this guy. <laughs> and she, he just kept on for five minutes. She's like, well, are you working on, you're not working on an uh, enterprise story? He's like, no, nah, nah, you know. And she says, okay. She says, well, why the hell are you in the office? Get out there and find a story, you know? And, you know, I mean, but we have that, we have the license, we have that, that, uh, to, to do that. And if we have it, I would say take advantage of it. So, you know, uh, I don't think, I, I think I'm always chasing that story. It doesn't, like I say, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a five inch story or a 30 inch story, you know, um, everything should be a challenge and I don't think anything should be disregarded. So um, try to bring the best of everything I have to whatever I'm working on, so. Cool, thank you. Yes, ma'am. What are you working on right now, if I may ask? Um, <laughs> I am trying to get in with the Ranger actually right now. This is like my first semester back on um, campus. So I'm oh. actually trying to get my, uh, just a little like portfolio together to give to Trish. Okay. So trying to give you the best Trish, trying to give you the best I got. Okay. I'm ready. Um, I'm vouching for, okay. <laughs> I'm trying to think of other. Um, Let's see, you get another question from Irene. <laughs> well, I know since we're all over 18, I would say dark liquor, but that's okay. Um, uh, no, I don't. I'm <laughs> just joking. Um, you know what, um, there, there have been many times, thank you for the question. Um, I, well, number one, uh, I'm very fortunate that I have um, my therapist, my porch therapist, my wife, we go on the porch and I just spew all this stuff and get it out of my system. I think that really, the first thing I do is try to get it off my, get it off my chest, man, you know, to, you know, to acknowledge that yeah, this happened. I wasn't too thrilled about it. But the one thing that, um, you know, I think I learned from the Express, I mean, from the Express News and the Ranger, um, especially when it comes to interpersonal things, okay, we just, you know, is that a lot of times it's not personal. It's just, you, it's just, you know, it's just Tuesday for that person. It's not necessarily aimed at you, you know. So when you have that in your back of your head, you're like, okay, you don't know what he or she is going through at home or what's going on or that this might be their surly disposition. And if it is, it really is not your business, it's their business. <laughs> so you need to go ahead and not let that, you know, be an impediment to whatever you were trying to do. Seriously, man. And um, I'm a big un unashamed uh fan of Ted Lasso. I don't know how many Ted Lasso fans out there. No Ted Lasso yeah. fans? I, I saw that they were killing it on the Emmy. So I, I put that on my list to watch pretty soon. Okay, well, I'm just going to throw it out there. Y'all need to be watching. If you, have, if you have Apple Plus, you need to be watching Ted Lasso. You know, I, yeah. I, I'll just leave it at that. Um, thank you, Jennifer. All right. So uh, it, it's, um, but you, you know, um, whatever it is, uh, I try to have some outside things. Like I draw, I still draw. I mean, that's how I came into this business. So that, uh, I still sketch. I have to have something outside. Um, and I'm sit either sitting on the porch with my wife or just sitting on the porch just to reflect and like, you know, move on. Because at the end of the day, a lot of the stuff that we, call problems are, they're not, problem. they may be irritations, they may annoy you, but they're not anything that's um, just like, you know, the end of the world, you know? And I try to keep that perspective. I, you know, really, we're very fortunate to be doing what we're doing. You're fortunate to be doing what you're doing, you know? And you're fortunate to be working with folks that are teaching you principles that you're gonna carry with you as long, if you're a journalist, photojournalist, editor, marketing, whatever, you know, whatever you're learning now 
at the ranger you will take with you no matter what career field you go into you know and um i'm not just they don't they don't pay me to say this but it's it's true and um so um it's this this is my support system these are my people uh and um i wish more folks out there would take advantage of uh, this great resource that's here in san antonio so i mean at the at, especially at sac you know so but yeah that's how i do it i used to run i used to play racquetball but i'm too old now so but i think you have to have an outside um activity you know even if it's just walking or you know or it, well the big thing though for me is listening to music i uh, you know I, I put on my music and I, you know, I'm like, okay, you know, calm down, ramp down, you know, and uh, it's a habit too. If I'm if I get stuck while I'm writing, I'll I'll put in my earbuds and you know, you know, just it's the background music, and uh, it'll calm me down and keep me going. But at this stage, I've learned that you know, unless it's definitely the end of the world whatever little outside things going on are not the end of the world uh it's just about focus it's like you know the older folks at the express news there was a, a gentleman uh the guy who hired me down there uh, craig thomason uh, he's passed but he would always walk by and he wouldn't just say, he wouldn't he wouldn't talk to one reporter directly he would just walk the aisle <laughs> And throw out these little witticisms, you know, like, you know, keep your blinders on, focus on, you know, what's in front of you on your computer. Don't worry about what's outside, you know. And it may sound trite, but it's true. It's, you know, if you follow that, you know, advice, a lot of what goes on around you, you you'll realize it's really not, it's much ado about nothing. Jen, do you have a question? Oh, no. no. Yeah, I do, I do. I do. Um, so I, we didn't really talk about your, your background with um, job changes and things. And I wasn't sure if you've had any job changes between working, um, like, or have you been at the Express News this entire stint? But how would you handle, um, like, seeing your, your work progress to a different section or seeing um how you handle the, the growth that happens with your job like whether or not you end up moving on to something else or um just trying to figure out like because i'm in the middle of uh changing careers and want to see how how that changes your perspective when you're so used to doing a particular role yeah i i guess the only um and i I've been very fortunate. I mean, I've been at the Express News since 1999. Wow. You know, and um, I had to adjust when um, I went to from Metro to features. Um, but the adjustment was, you know, um, the daily, the, I wasn't doing the dailies that I was doing in Metro. And I was only there for like eight months or so. Um, but I like the pace of the uh, of Metro. Um, because it keeps you on your feet. And for the last two years, I was working Saturdays. And yeah, it kept me dailies, you know, doing dailies, sometimes two a day, you know, so it kept my hand going and my mind, you know, fresh. But um, I guess the biggest transition for me was transitioning from the Air Force after 22 years, um, you know, to the civilian world. And um, it was it was like I was excited because it was uh, it was a new challenge, and um, I was lucky because I was thrown right into to, to college. I, I, I there was only a couple maybe a month off between the time I retired from the Air Force to um, you know getting it going to SAC. I remember I didn't even know how to get to SAC <laughs> the first morning that I went there. Uh, back then we had the maps goes, so we didn't, we didn't have GPS. So I had to look at it that morning and like, okay, uh, you know, and that's uh, the first time I got to SAC uh, was the first time that, you know, I'd actually 
been on campus, you know? Um, so I, I, I just look at, I mean, whatever you, what are you going into, man? Let me ask. I'm about to graduate with my digital audiences degree. So that's a still part of um, working with newspapers, but it's working on the social media side. Oh, outstanding. That's it. I mean, it's like, it's, it's like a new, I mean, I would say that for me, I, I, I it was a, um, going to SAC and getting into college and getting the civilian world was like a great adventure, you know? I mean, I, I was just really amped up for whatever happened, I was ready to learn. And it sounds like, you know, that might be the way that you're feeling about your new direction. Um, and you can't go wrong that way, you know? Uh, you you go in and, and before you, I mean, before I knew it, I had like two or three weeks under my belt at SAC. I couldn't really account for it. And then when I got to the Ranger, I, <laughs> I was in another world. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, because I had deadlines again. And, and that, those were my first deadlines, you know, doing editorial cartoons and illustrations for the paper. And um, that was my first introduction to uh, deadlines. Um, so everything that you do, it starts to, um, if you will, um, it'll kind of wall away any trepidation you have because you're learning, you know, the job is going to take you into the future. So um, that's what kept me going. I mean, it was always something going on. I was taking 12 hours plus working at the Ranger and then later on working down at the Express News as a, as a temporary editorial assistant. So I had a lot to keep me busy. And I would say, as long as you keep, you know, you're not, your hands aren't idle, you'll be fine. Thank you. Oh, Veronica's in the army. Oh, all right. Vincent, I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we've talked about how to overcome challenges and hardships, which are very helpful. But what is there about what you do in journalism that makes it all worth it? Like, why do you want to keep doing this? Oh, man. You know, so, you know, I was very fortunate. I mean, and I, it's part of this is your fault, Miss Miss Odom. Uh, I had, when I took Miss Odom's uh, feature writing class, I mean, up to that point, I, I, you know, I mean, I, I had the, you know, I had learned, you know, um, the building, you know, the building blocks of, of journalism, how to write a story, you know, the who, what, when, where, why, and how. I knew that, but I didn't know that you could write a story um, and express yourself through a story you know, and to tell a story, not a report, not report with, you know, but to tell a story and to take that little bit of artistic license to put to like, tell a story, you know, like say, and then maybe even use dialogue, you know, uh, and, tr you know, and uh, take people to different places, you know, and all that, you know, and um, that's what keeps me going. And the thing to hear back from readers you know, like, oh man, you know, like we, um, you know, the column allows me to, not just me, but the editor, the photographer, our team to share these these little stories. And in the midst of everything going on, you know, we need that, you know, to know about the infrastructures and the taxes and, you know, where your money's going and everything like that. But the paper is not just one thing, it's all things. So, um, we take that charge to tell these stories very seriously. And it depends, you know, to, out, to go out there, do the coverage and find out, is this a funny story? Is this a touching story? Is this a story that, you know, is, you know, um, you know, really gonna open your eyes about something that somebody did 40 years ago? Um, so we get the response that we've gotten has been very promising. Uh, you know, the fact like we wrote a column about this 10 year old girl, this 10 year old chef. It's one of my favorite, well, one of the stories I've had a really good time writing. Um, and it's about this little girl who had ADHD and she was disruptive in, disruptive in class and um, she just couldn't control herself. Um, just, you know, blurted out, disruptive in school and outside of school. So a family friend, uh, his name is uh, Milam, Milam Williams, 
and uh, he's a chef. Uh, and he, um, his background is he was a former gang member, uh, went to jail, went to prison for 15 years, but culinary classes saved him. So when he got out of jail, he started a nonprofit, you know, to help other kids who may have been on the border or headed in that direction, or just kids in need of just, you know, something to help them see their way. And um, we went out to this young lady's house and we arrived and she had in her chef's jacket. She's 10 years old. She had a chef's jacket on. She had her hair pulled back. She had four or five pots going at the same time. And we came in and she's like, you know, we're watching her talk to her. She's very poised because, you know, she had taken on the ways of a chef. And there were strict rules and she followed those rules that the chef had taught her. And so she got to cooking everything. We, we felt like we were on the set of, of um, you know, chopped because she was like, you know, today I have prepared for you. You know, we're like, and she, she, she plated the food <laughs> and she put the plates in front of us and stood back like to watch our reaction. And I was like, wow, you know, those little moments, man, for me, are, are, are the ones that um, I think really um, share the fact that we're all the same, man. You know, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a uh, display of our human of humanity without beating somebody over the head, you know. So that's where, you know, the things that we learned from, you know, Irene and Miss Odom and Trish about show. And hey, Mr. Hunt, show, don't tell. You know, so um, those things keep me going. But it's really the little stories, you know, um, uh, little stories like a father and his daughter going out to um, what's the what's the lake over um, that? Um, what's the what's the park? The lake over there um, in town. Woodlawn. Uh, Woodlawn, Woodlawn Lake. Lake. We had a, we had a, uh, we had gone out. The photographer and I had gone out. We had been out almost uh, five hours. We hadn't found anything, and we had started late. And it was, you know, we just never, we didn't want to go back without finding a story. And as we were heading, we went to Travis, or, I mean, to Woodlawn Lake, and we couldn't, see, we didn't see anything. The sun was about going down, and it, and the, it had painted the whole out. I mean, just kind of this golden fringe around everything, the trees and the, the cars and everything. And as we were getting ready to go out, we looked over to the casting pond and we saw this father and his daughter, the only ones there, you know, together. So we said, let's go see what's going on. So we did, we found out that every Wednesday, the father and his daughter went out there. They didn't go to fish. They just went out to kind of hang out and commune with nature, you know, and you find out that that's something that his uncle did for him. So he was doing it for his daughter. And we wrote that story. And um, this is right when everything was starting to go online. And I got two emails from two people. This guy's like, he said, man, I wrote, I read that story. I don't even like fishing. <laughs> I was like, okay, well, all right, great. But the second one was the one that mm, it really hit me hard because it's like people always say you know right and put people there but you know this gentleman wrote he said man you know he said I could I was there I felt like I was there because we you know we it was just an exercise and really just you know describing the scene and what they were going through and he said I gotta tell you he said man I I, I could see it you know he says it meant a lot to me because I'm losing my eyesight I'm like wow So, you know, what we do, um, I think it does, it, it makes a difference, you know? Uh, and that's the reason, I mean, I do it. I mean, it keeps me going um, to share, share these stories and show that um, as much as we are different, we're, we're alike, you know? And uh, so, and that's why, you know, be where if you're covering city hall, or you're an environment reporter, or you work the police beat, or the medical beat, or whatever, man. It's like drill down and like 
our current editor, he's like, work your beats. You know, you know your beat. Work your beat. So if if you if you're the photojournalist and you know, think about it, you're sitting around the newsroom or or whatever, you're on campus, go and find something. There's something going on somewhere. Somebody's doing something, you know. So and a lot of times the wild art could even turn into stories, you know. So um, you know, and the things that uh, I learned, I you know, I have to also have, have a social, social media presence. So a lot of times I will take photos for Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And a lot of, and I try to use the techniques I learned, you know, at the Ranger, you know, and just sitting down and overhearing, you know, lectures and stuff, you know, committing, putting that in my toolbox and, you know, um, you know, learning as I go out, you know, all the different things, hopefully to take, to make a good image so I can put on uh, Twitter or, or Facebook or, or Instagram. So, you know, so I remember sitting in, I, I think uh, when we had the urban journalism workshop, I would sit, you know, you would be sitting out and I could hear Dr. Lowe talking about, uh, you know, different things. So yeah. You were teaching. You were teaching us too, Doctor Lowe. You didn't know it. But. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> Thank you. We're listening. You know, so um, and and so there's another thing that uh, from Ted Lasso. It's a quote by um, Walt Whitman that he used. Um, you know about. I think it fits. It's, it's um, fitting for journalists. Is um, you know be curious, not judgmental. Hey, yeah. Vincent, can I ask you a question? Most definitely, sir. Yeah, how, how, how do you think, uh, how important is the photographers getting cut line information? <laughs> <laughs> it's very important, sir. Uh, you know, and that's where, and also the editor, the, the editor will, <laughs> a, a lot of times, I, I've gotten my share of phone calls you know, like when I say, hey, uh, you know, this caption uh, says that their name is spelled this way, but you have it spelled this way. And a lot of times the photographer is right. So I'm like, oh man, they're right, you know. So um, a lot of times we share information so that um, the photographer and I will share information so that we're, uh, you know, whatever's in the story agrees with the caption. So um, and I say at least 60% of the time, like, you know, that's, that's, that's the way that we, we stay in agreement and make sure that there's no, there isn't a mistake, if you will, you know, but I try to give the photographer, like when I put in a photo assignment, I try to put in as much information as I can, uh, to help them, you know, um, with their, whatever caption that they come up with, you know, um, but, um, a lot of times in dealing with captions, um, I will look at them because there may be something I missed but the photographer has in the photo caption that I can also include in the story. So we kind of do that, both of us, you know, uh, we'll look at each other's, like they'll read the story or I'll look at their captions and there may be something that we can, you know, beef up, we can beef up our descriptions or information in the caption of the story. So it's very, very important to be on the same page. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir.